on this episode. The competitiveness internally to the team can be a challenge sometimes to manage. They're great teammates, but uh, super competitive on stage. We hit the bank really hard, so I was like nursing the car for the next 16 miles. Unlucky, we were very doing very good before it. Any significant damage on it or not? And we could have pushed on a lot harder and capitalised more on his problem. This is Launch Control. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Here in the Pacific Northwest at the Olympus Rally, Subaru's two drivers are looking to change their fortunes having missed the top step of the podium at the previous round. Every event we do now is, is critical, really. When the first one didn't quite go to plan, it's obviously, it's, it was obviously going to try and strike back. At the 100-acre Wood Rally, Higgins and Drew were poised to take the win. A substantial lead combined with event experience was the perfect combination until a sensor failed and the lead slipped away. Things just stopped. Sport. Still a podium, but behind their new teammate. You do? Third? Well, uh, I think so. So this weekend, they want to return to their winning ways. This rally has always been a good rally for us for speed, but we haven't always had an awful lot of um, luck on this event, and it is just a super hard event. So I think the plan to start with is just to go out and see see what the pace is at, see where, where we are. Um, but also, obviously, Barry is a, is a big factor. You know, he won the last round. He's ahead of us in the championship. And where we've been used to fighting teammates, it's now definitely now not a two-way fight anymore. Their teammate this weekend is once again the 17-year-old Oliver Solberg, starting the season on the podium inevitably raises expectations. Oliver Solberg and Aaron Johnston of Super Remote. He wasn't supposed to be a threat for the win. It was supposed to be the start of a learning process, but Oliver showed maturity beyond his years. And when disaster struck for Higgins, Oliver was there to capitalize. <laughs> of course, it's uh, second place from Honda Kewood is, is very good and I don't feel any pressure coming into this race. You know, David and Barry has driven here many times. It's very difficult roads, and also they have a better road position than me. So I'm just going to go out, do my best, and hopefully it, I don't lose too much time, but we'll see. I think it will be a different race, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Learning curve, yeah. yeah. When you're 17, you don't, these roads are so difficult, and two passes. In some ways, the story remains the same youthful talent versus the proven champion. Every step forward for one changes the story for the other. How will the story shift over the course of these stages? This time, it's Solberg in the number 70 car who leads the way on the stages. It's another new challenge. He'll have to sweep the gravel for the cars behind him without the benefit of seeing his competitors' lines. With fresh pace notes and a new co-driver, it's uncharted territory for Solberg. These stages are more technical than the last event, less forgiving and rough. They must find speed but save their tires. Trust the notes and be relentless. It's a thin line between victory and failure. And the competitors are giving chase. Barry McKenna took the win at the last event. His eyes are set on another win and the overall championship run. Higgins and Drew know they'll have to watch him just as much as their teammate. They're masters at managing a lead, so the plan is to strike first. Three, two, one, go. 70, flat left over crest, 40. Left five narrows. They have the experience and speed to take control of the rally before anyone has a chance to react. And they strike. 120. 
The question is, how big a cut can they make? How much pressure can they apply? That's when he sees their biggest target pulled over after a small crash on stage two. McKenna is out. Flat crest, then right six. Left five tracks five minus of a finish. They push on to finish the loop with a small lead. That was horrendous. Knee for horrendous. Charmaine. Yeah. Dear, 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 Barry. It was okay, um, first stage was really careful, just trying to get a bit of a rhythm, didn't really get into a, a good go, but the time was okay, and then the second stage was some huge rocks pulled out in places, so just trying to be, be neat and be smart, and then obviously um, Barry had gone off in the stage, so we got held up by him a little bit in there, so just got it to the end and make some change on the car now a little bit and see if we can um, just try and protect the car a bit for the second loop of the stage, they're going to be a lot rougher. Any significant damage on it or not? So in the front, in the medium there, in the back and soft in the front is good. Not bad. I didn't lose too much time uh, to be on the first on the road. Have to still play, be smart and play calm because it's a long rally still and very rough. So have to be smart. But my tire choice was good. Since I'm first on the road, I really want to have a good performance with the soft tires. So I'm happy with the choice I did. Service ends, and both cars head out for another loop of stages. For the second leg in a row, Solberg and Girardet are the lead team into the stages. Oliver trails Higgins by just a few seconds. Impressive pace once again for the young star. But does he have the confidence to step up his pace and push for the lead? Six left, keep very in. 60, short four right, plus mid into three left, plus keep in. Three plus keep in to keep left of a crest. And six right minus, I turn very in, five minus of a crest. Into six left minus, I turn just get three plus. Into six right minus. Higgins and Drew double down. They can't afford to concede an inch if they want to carry the lead into day two. And extra late right two minus hug. And left three hug, 30. With the gap to Solberg shrinking, a great battle is forming. Then a brake line gets nicked. Then right four plus, think. Okay, right four plus, 40. For the second time in two events, Higgins and Drew go from race leaders to damage control. Early left four plus, you don't know what's happened to him, let's yeah, keep going. I've lost a brake pipe. So only left four plus, 18, we've got about three and a half miles, spin right one. Nothing at all on the pedal. Yeah, mate. The number 75 Subaru is bleeding time. Higgins has to use the handbrake to slow the car. One car's problem is another car's fortune. Solberg is now the race leader, even if he doesn't know it yet. And four right minus, Titan three plus, keep in, 40, two left minus. Two left minus, half long, Titan one plus, don't cut. Titan one plus, don't cut. Open long, keep in, and two right minus, Titan one plus, keep in. Titan one plus, keep in, and need three left plus, Titan, and one right. He finishes the stage clean with a solid time. Higgins and Drew continue to limp. Entry, left four minus long hug. Better mile and a half. Entry, left four minus long hug. Hard on the handbrake in every corner. It's a handful. Press 40. Flat press 50. Left six over finish. Damage limitation done. They drop 26 seconds to end the day in second place. The defending champ arrives at the end of day service. The frustration is clear. 
David had some issues on the last run and lost a, a brake line, so he didn't get to give a fair fight with Oliver. They're great teammates, but uh, still super competitive on stage. It's the luck of the draw. This is rallying. This is what happens. So uh, we've just got to try to have a better day tomorrow. For the first time in his short American rally career, Oliver now finds himself managing a lead. We had very good speed and we were leading, so I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy, <laughs> for sure. That makes everything. When you're happy, you enjoy, and, uh, uh, and the car works really well. Oliver's done a spectacular job, so the, the competitiveness internally to the team uh, can be a challenge sometimes to manage, so we want to try to make sure they both have a good day tomorrow. While one program is in the midst of battle, on the other side of the continent, the Rallycross program has begun its longest test to finalize their updated cars ahead of the season. So we're here in Canaan Motor Club. We've got a, a five-day test, which is awesome to have that amount of time. Basically fine-tuning the car for each driver, getting ready for that first race in mid-Ohio. It's kind of our go-to uh, testing track. It gives us some high speed, some low speed, some tight stuff, flat turns, cambered turns. There's a little bit of everything here, so it's real nice for us. It's the right size, and it's close to home. With the defending champion now on the team, the off-season has been fruitful. Now it's time to share his championship knowledge with his teammates. The guys have sat out for most of the, uh, the off-season testing and now they've come here to this test with Scott here to, to help sort of guide them through in adapting their style to suit the new car. We'll see what their feedback is. It's not that the car won't be changed, it will be changed to their style, but we think we've narrowed it down. They're all racers, but this is a team where everyone is pulling in the same direction. They're team players, these guys. They know, I mean, it's like you're getting, a, getting another player on the team who's good and it's gonna bring the whole team up. He comes from a completely different background than me and Chris. Uh, he's an open wheel guy, he's done Formula One and all that, and me and Chris are from the forest. So you, you do pace notes on the next step. Dude, are you kidding? You crushed it. Having not done a lot of the development testing, it was different because we'd been doing a lot of that before, but also we had to give Scott a chance to give his input to the car. Um, I kind of went in with a preconceived notion of what I thought the car was going to feel like from watching it throughout the years, and when I sat in it, it was a, it was a much different story. The car, it's a really great car. And that's a, that's a testament to the team, to the engineers. Uh, they've done a really great job with the car. It's not even fair. <laughs> it's not fair. I, I would go back on that, yeah. but the front is just not fair. Not fair. What we're trying to do when we go test is make a conclusion on something. What's very difficult is making those conclusions because there's lots of variable. So what we try to do is that we do a few changes in one direction that feels better and better. Being a smooth track with not much gravel, you'd expect a stiffer spring to work, so we'll try that. Yes, it does work. No, it doesn't work. Why? But then we also always go back and do a back-to-back -back check and see, okay, was that good? Or did we just create another problem? Every time you do something, okay, we, the engineers note that down, that did that. It would work in this area, but not in that area. And you go through that process. Testing is so much about building that toolbox and make sure that you have all tools in the box before you go to the first race. The consensus is that the car has taken an important leap forward. Before you could fine tune it into to one specific track, maybe get a good lap out of it, but we couldn't put it together for a whole season, a whole race. The, the window for last year's car was kind of razor thin. You either had it or you didn't. The window of operation for the new car is much wider, so you can get fast laps out of it for the whole race. It, it feels like it would be our final test before the race. That's how well organized it is and, and how confident we are that we have checked these boxes along. We've moved different tracks, we've tried different layouts, and every time we've ended up in a similar base and been able to make similar steps and get the same results is super encouraging. I'm so confident right now of everything we found. Um, I'm like giddy with having, it's like Christmas morning.
back in Washington State, Oliver Solberg faces a new reality on day two of Olympus Rally. For the first time in America, he must defend a lead. 38 seconds with 60 stage miles remaining. If he can keep that intact, he'll claim his first American Rally Association victory. Once into the stage, the rubber meets the road. His success will hinge on balancing his obvious raw speed with car preservation, something the champion knows all about. It takes years to refine that skill. Push too hard, and you can shred your tires when you need them most. Ride the limit, and the car must absorb more abuse. Higgins and Drew know the balance, but today they have a mountain to climb. Flat crest, 250, get a rhythm back now. Flat right, 100, in crest, the left three long eight, tight to two plus. Small braking crest, the left three long eight, tight to two plus. 80. They open the day with a statement, taking one second per mile out of Solberg. The lead is cut to 29 seconds. Back with Solberg, he's on the final stretch of the big 20-mile stage. He doesn't realize it yet, but he's got two destroyed rear tires. And early six-right minus tarmac. He's running on slicks, losing time, and then he spins. We have a puncture. Yes, but come on. Now, it's Oliver's turn to face adversity. He loses another 15 seconds to his teammate, the lead shrinking to just 16 seconds with another 31 miles to run. I thought we had bad rear tires because the other one was also very bad. When I hit the tarmac, it was a puncture. It will be an interesting afternoon. Sure. Crabbing into service, the team helps get the car into the service bay. He's lucky to retain the lead. Both punctured, they were out, and then I got punctures on the rear, you know, so... Unlucky to get, to get the punctures because we were very doing very good before it. Really, it was just the, the flat wheels that was making it crab come in, so it looked way worse than it actually was. The rest of it is a routine service. For Higgins and Drew, they know this race is anything but over. We hit the bank really hard, um, and I thought I had a punch or I broke something with suspension for a while, so I was like nursing the car for the next 60 miles. It's bent something, but not as bad as it actually could have been. And um, we could have pushed on a lot harder and capitalised more on his problem, but we didn't really. So but that's that's the way it goes sometimes. Two stages. That's all that's left between Oliver and his first ever American victory. Plus 30, two right plus 40, two right minus, Titan short one. Titan short one. The first pass on these stages, he destroyed the tires. He can't afford to let that happen again. Can the 17 year old Phenom find the right balance between speed and preservation? The mental game to manage his emotions. He keep right of a friend and for left minus, Titan two plus. Into four right minus long of a stress, Titan three plus long, open Titan two minus half long Titan. Higgins and Drew push hard on the opening stage. They know that the co-drivers will exchange times at the end, and that's the biggest pressure they can apply. They take two seconds out of their teammate. It's good, but not good enough. Oliver now has 14 seconds in hand, over 20 miles. It's a buffer of less than a second a mile. But if he can hold off the attack and save the tires, the victory is his. It's the final corners, past the fans. 
Come on. And he's done it. Okay. Thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you very much. <laughs> At the beginning of the year, the storyline seemed clear. Watch one team mount another championship campaign, while the other team grew into future stars. Well done, mate. Absolutely. Bloody awesome. I pushed like hell on that last lap. I was clean to save the tires. In Rallycross, they would hire the most successful driver in the series. He's the guy to beat. For us to have him is a huge confidence boost. And the three-car team would rise from there. But it's never as simple as it seems. Not nearly as black and white. What happens when that kid who's learning is more prepared than you expected? He had a good clean run, so fair play to him. It was a great result for him, but unfortunately, it's just not quite what we wanted. Just need to change that look and have a good, reliable rally next one now. I think me and David have done a fantastic job together for the team, and then managed to beat him was a fantastic feeling, you know. What happens when you didn't just hire a great driver, but a man who's able to help the team unlock their full potential? Scott's brought us an, uh, a new approach on areas to focus on and, and styles of driving, techniques of driving. What happens when the young talent turns the corner in just two events and starts making a run at the title? Oliver did an amazing job and uh, he's already making himself a name with the Subaru brand, so it's exciting to see. The truth is, this team is turning a corner this year, writing a story of what happens when hard work and determination meets good timing and good fortune. We're at the very beginning of something, it's really nice.